Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Sean, and I'm playing Andreas Witchborn, the Human Magus. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the Halfling Fighter. I'm Jeanette, and I'm playing Jonesy, the Human Cleric. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the Human Barbarian. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, the scouts confronted two spooky whites guarding an old barrow. They explained that they had <laughs> <laughs> they explained that they had been cursed by Hiajor, an Iraceni sorcerer, to guard his corpse forever. Only a consecration ritual would free them. Or, alternatively, the party could just also attack and destroy them. But I don't think you're interested in that. The heroes then found a glyptodon sleeping in the shade of a standing stone, but wisely backed off when it made its displeasure clear. They then used the magical map on the divination of Paku to find a cave in the hills three days to the southeast. Just as the map predicted, they found a cave with a chest inside and a symbol of, and a symbol of phrasma on it. After doing an amazing job picking the lock four times to unlock it and waiting for everyone else to back up about 20 feet, Zankath opened the chest. I'm really embarrassed that I didn't recognize that it, the holy symbol on this chest wasn't a butterfly, and I got all excited. <laughs> I could cut that part out. I think we should probably add, add that he's, to the intro. He said something about a star, and so that's why... Yeah, it was confused. a comet, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. the shooting star. I was it's like, like, yeah! I get it. I didn't, I didn't think anything of it either. So anyways, what's in the chest? Are we ready to find out what's in the box? What's in the what's box? What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Michael, what's in the box? Well, I'll tell you... A brand new car! <gasps> no. That'd be sweet. <laughs> Zankath, as you open the weird box made of bone and leather, four ephemeral magical threads appear and whirl around it. Roll for initiative. Oh. Everybody? Everybody. Roll, uh, I think everybody else is 100 feet back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was 20 for everybody and 100 for all the animals. Oh, man. So you only need to roll for the four of you. We don't need to worry about your, your animal companions because you explicitly said that you sent them back so far out of range that it would be unable to render aid. Correct. Stop running away, Josh. Josh, come back here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't catch me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have rolled for the hazards initiative. Okay. I've never run a complex hazard before. I don't know what that means. Complex hazards are like traps and things, except complex hazards roll initiative. And they have multiple mm. actions. First, before anyone gets to act, before initiative even, there is a reaction that happens called Breath of Phrasma. The winds around the box swirl around and then sap the energy of the living. And all of Excellent. you must make a will save. Classic. Classic. <laughs> Is this attempting to control my actions in any way? Uh, let's see what tags this has. Or fear. I'm looking for fear. There, there's no fear involved. Okay. Oh my gosh. I think, um, I, think I'm using, I think I'm using this hero point. I think we're all using this hero I, point. I don't see anything here about it trying to... Con the, the tags don't mention that it controls your actions. There's no charm or anything like that, if that's what you're looking for. Oh, yeah. So, Corgo, <laughs> what did you get on your will save? Um, I rolled two for a total of ten. I think I'm going to use a hero point. I don't know how important this is, so I'll, I'm just assuming that this would be bad. To f Feels like this would be bad to fail. Rerolled, got a 25 total. Okay, 25. That is a success. Uh, Andreas, what'd you get? So I rolled an 11 and thought, whoa, that sucked. So I rolled at my hero point and got a nine. So Andreas is still under some impression that, you know, he forgot it was for asthma and now he's still back on Dazna again. He <laughs> sees these stars come flying out of the chest and is like, yes, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and he's just giving himself over to Desna, but it's not her. Unfortunately, that is a critical failure. Oof. <laughs> and Andreas is slowed too. Oh, I can't do anything when I'm slowed too. Put that out there as an official. Okay. So, like, no different from usual? 
Ouch. Oh, oh ow. PVP. Wow, that is some unnecessary shade. Okay. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. We're old buddies. We razz each other, you guys. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Zancath, what did you get? I got a 12 and then also used my hero point and got a 23. All right. You are not affected. And Jonesy. Jonesy got a 26. Will is his best save. Jonesy is not affected. And not using his hero point. And not using his hero point. <laughs> Which is nice. So that means we're now at the top of the initiative order, and Corgo gets to go first. So Corgo, these four threads come wisping out of this box, and they're going to do something. You're not sure what you can do about these threads. You see them sort of just waving around. One of them looks like it's making its way toward each of you. Oh. Fun. Hmm. But, okay, so Spidey senses have gone off. Yeah. And he doesn't think it's good. He does notice that the old man has become infatuated. <laughs> Can he... <laughs> and he has all three... Korg has all three actions? Sure, Yeah. Can he grab Andreas by, like, the collar and just drag him away? Sure. How far are you going to drag him? Uh, far? Well, uh... That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> far, so, far away enough that the th- whatever the thread wants to do won't work. <laughs> That's a very specific... <laughs> that far. You got That's me there. Like that how's, far. How's that? <laughs> how about 25 feet? 25 feet further away? Sure. All right, so you're going to take a couple actions. Do we decide if we're dragging someone like Andreas, who's wearing armor and has all the equipment and everything, do we decide how far you can drag him? I think we've discussed this before. My bulk is six. So if six bulk added to your bulk would make you encumbered, and that says on your inventory sheet at the very bottom, then you can only move real slow. My max bulk. Yeah, your current carried bulk is 12. Encumbered would be 18. Yeah, if you drag him, you're going to be encumbered, so you move at... Is it going to be half speed? I'm just double-checking. Encumbered is... A 10-foot penalty. Okay. Okay, so we're moving back 15 feet, but we still have one more action, so we're moving back another 15 feet. Okay, so you are now... You were 20 feet away to start with. You're 50 feet away, and that tentacle looks like it's still coming for you. (gasps) Tentacle. Tentacle thread, wisp, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Tentacle uh-huh. changes my reaction. Uh-huh. Yeah, it does. It's, it's, yeah. it's, That's it's a significant not, difference. It's, it's less like a tentacle, right? I mean, it doesn't have little suckers or anything. Tentacle's probably not a good choice of words. Yeah, but you no, used fine. it. It's too late to take that back I now. I still did. <laughs> Ephemeral magical threads. Pseudopod. It's just a pseudopod. Pseudopod, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's what Korra goes. Korra goes, Spidey senses goes off, spins around, sees the things happening, sees the old man's infatuated, and is like, come on, and drags him further away. So you are now 50 feet away from this chest, and that's Korgo's actions. Andreas, Korgo has just dragged you away. But what, what are you doing? Desna's trying to give me a sweet embrace. And you remember that it's actually not Desna, it's Verasma. Oh, good thing I didn't have to roll for that. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't have to roll. I mean, you you just, you hobbled yourself by saying it was still Desna as an excuse. But you, you remember now that it's it's for asthma. And uh, unfortunately, you are so slowed that there's not much you can do here. I can try to roll a recall knowledge, though. You can. Yeah. So uh, why don't you make a religion check? Okie dokie. <laughs> there you go. Blind GM roll to Mike. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you some information here. This uh, is not quite as clear as it could be on how you identify what you should do with this thing, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. You think that there are a few things you could do. There are big, No, not a few. There are two. There are two things you could do to dissipate these threads. You can use a religion check or a performance check. Now, here's the catch. To use a religion check, you have to be an expert. And mm. Jonesy is only trained, and he's the best at religion, right? Right. Don't look at my character sheet. The other option <laughs> is to do a performance check, and you must be trained in performance. Is anyone trained in performance? Nope. Mm. Nope. So what that means is, Andreas has just realized, there is nothing you can do about this uh, ward. 
you are unable to disable it. Like it's just going to chase us forever? If you try to get close to it, these threads are going to attack you, and there will be nothing you can do about it. And do I have any idea what sort of effect they're going to impart? They will inflict on you, because you're alive, they would inflict negative damage. Mm. But we know somebody who's not alive. If you knew somebody who was not alive and you opened this up, it would inflict positive damage on them. Oh. Uh, so Andreas uh, realizes this and calls out, Jonesy, Zankath, get back. We have to come up with an alternative plan. We cannot disable this. Uh, n- none of us are faithful enough or skilled at guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty faithful. Yeah. I, by the way, it doesn't actually say what you would do with a religion check or a performance check. It just says you need to use them. It doesn't say how would a performance help. It just says that. If only I hadn't tossed that snake charming flute out when I left Opara. <laughs> we would have still had it with us. And it is now the wart's turn. So it is going to make an attack on Jonesy Actually, on all of you. It's going to make an attack on each of you. It's probably fine. (laughs) It's probably fine. (laughs) Each thread of energy passes through a living or undead creature within 60 feet, dealing damage. So I need each of you to make another will save. This went so well before. Oh, Andreas, nice. I'm better now. Okay, well, well, good for you guys. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, so Andreas, what'd you get? Uh, I got a natural 20 for a 27. And that is a critical success. You take no damage. Corgo? How's up? 25. All right. You take half damage, which in this case will be four points of damage. And Jonesy, what did you get? 23. And that is a success, so you'll also only take half damage. Oof. Ouch. So you only take eight damage, Jonesy. Okay, and I gotta do all the math. I know, I'm sorry. What was the, uh, what was Zancath's check? A 15. Unfortunately, that does not pass. So, uh, that's going to be the full 4d6 damage. 14 points of damage to Zancath of negative energy damage. Ouchie! Zancath, it is now your turn. You're right there at the chest. It is open. You can see into it. What's in it? All right. So you look in the chest. Is that an action? (laughs) There are three holy symbols. There is a bundle of something, little stick-like things tied up together. There is a smooth white staff with a ruby-encrusted gold cross on top. Ooh. And then there's a slim leather folio. Ooh. (laughs) Take it, get all that stuff. (laughs) Grab all the stuff. Get it. Uh, okay, how much of that stuff can I grab? Um, I'm going to say if you want to, you could spend a couple actions and grab all of it. Okay, I'm going to grab all of it. Okay, and then what are you going to do? I'm going to close the chest. Oh, okay. I don't know that that's going to work, but I feel like it's worth a try. That's you know fun. what? Definitely I also, worth it. I also don't know if it's going to work. Uh, <laughs> what does it say? No, it looks like that's not going to disable it. No, that seems right. Yeah. It looks like you have to either disable it or be out of range. Okay. So you have now shut the chest, but unfortunately, that was not enough to end the hazard. And that is all my actions? Okay. Is it? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Jonesy. So technically, if this chest was open and then we like ran far away from it and like hurled rocks at it until it toppled over, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then somehow strategically took a really long rope and somehow tied it to the chest without touching it and dragged the chest away. Could we get to the items? I mean, I'm holding the items at this Zankath point. just scooped them all up out of the chest. Oh, you got it. I did. Oh, I thought you were saying you couldn't. No, oh. no. Oh, okay. Closing it didn't make the scary threads go away. Oh, okay. Well, then run away. <laughs> yes, I just don't have actions left. Cast, cast, cast guidance on her. Jonesy will heal Zancath, just in case. Okay. I'll take it. I will do a two-action heal on you for 22 hit points. Wow. Yeah, that's more than enough. I'm back at full. Thank you. And Jonesy will yell, run away, and (laughs) run away. 
just to where Corgo and Andreessa. Okay. Nope. Go further. They both got just, just can, got attacked. Go further. I think that's a full move, though. Okay. If you can't, then sure. I can only move 25 feet, I think. Because I did two action heal. Yeah. Corgo, you are... Corgo and Andreas were 50? Yeah. Away? Yeah. So let me move Andreas. And Jonesy, you were 20 feet away. Yep. Okay. So now our relative distances are set. And that's the end of Jonesy's turn. Corgo. So these are, I'm trying to, I'm painting this picture in my head. So these are like tendrils of negative energy and then yeah. they go like directly into our heart or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm picturing that Zanketh closed the chest and like they all went back inside for a second. I was like, oh, that's good. And then they, and then it, it just immediately pops back open and then they're sure. lurching back toward us. Yeah, that's cool. And then so Corgo's like, just doesn't really understand what's wrong with uh, Andreas. I was like, come on. And then he does the same thing. Just keeps dragging him away. Okay. I would just say it takes one action just to maintain the grapple. I'm putting grapple in quotes. And then move away another 30 feet. I'm going to say if you're grabbing him or grapple, or dragging him, then yeah, it takes like an action. Yeah, it makes sense. I'd think of it like, more as a friendly a hug than a grapple, <laughs> you know? But either way, yeah, I think you're just both... Just a little casual wrestling between buddies. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, so you're both pretty far away. That brings us to the next person, Andreas. Corgo has dragged you further away. You have one action. I got shield on myself. Okay. One action. All right. And the hazard gets to go again. And now the only people in range are Zancath and Jonesy. So you both need to make a will save. Better? Not? Uh, probably not. Oh, oh, that was really bad. Um, I oh, critically oh. failed, so think... I'm going to use my hero point. Yeah. Yeah. It's a rough fight for us. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Went from a 1 to a 20. Wow. 31. 31. That is a critical success. 18 for me. And an 18 for Zenkath is a failure. Yep. Jonesy takes no damage. And poor Zanketh takes 19 points of damage. Ouchie. That is the hazard's turn. These wispy limbs, all four of them. Oh, you know what, though? There are only two targets. Oh. No. I think that means you each get attacked again. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it means. You each need to make another will save. What? Yeah. 21 this the time. The suspicious eyes are flying on this Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> Something's fishy. Each thread of energy passes through a random living or undead creature within 60 feet. Yep. Yeah. They, the other two aren't just going to do nothing. They're going to attack. So, Zankath, what did you get? I got a 21, which I'm now disappointed in. <laughs> yep, and that's a failure, I'm afraid. And Jonesy? Sheesh. 23. And that is a success. So, uh, Jonesy, you're going to take half damage. For a second there, I was just picturing these two tendrils, like, just, like, hovering around, have a smoke by the water cooler. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. They redirect their attention to the two people in range. So, yep, Jonesy takes six points of damage. And Zankath. This cannot knock me out, but it could be close. Zankath takes 16 points of damage. Ouch. All right. And with that, the hazard is done. These weird, wispy... Uh, tendrils pierce through you and they just feel incredibly cold unnaturally cold and Zankath it is your turn 75 feet of movement by little feet little half leg feet run as <laughs> fast as they can alright Zankath runs <laughs> and she does in fact leave the range of the trap and that means it's Jonesy's turn Jonesy what do you want to do Jonesy will approach the chest. No, she's... <laughs> <laughs> what? He's going to book it. Make sure that Zankath gets past him because he's not a coward and doesn't run away from stuff. Okay. Until everyone else has run away. Until everybody else has run That's away. That's right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And then he will fall behind. Okay. So with that, we'll end the encounter because you are out of range and there's nothing else that this hazard can do to you. So and Andreas try, uh, goes to high five people, but he's too slow. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of stands there awkwardly or a little too long afterward. His hand's like slowly moving <laughs> towards your hand and he's waiting for way too long for it to hit. Uh, when it's clear that they're not following us, Zankath drops all the stuff and is shivering uncontrollably. Yeah, it's you feel unnaturally cold. I don't know how long the slow condition lasts. 
Any idea how I could figure that out? Because it doesn't say in the description. Forever. What's the name of the hazard? It's called Death Slumber Ward. It's a positive sounding name. That's fine. Death Slumber Ward. Uh, Zankath, would you prefer that I heal you or perhaps cast Burning Hands to warm you up? Uh, let's start with the healing and may- maybe a fire. Jonesy will heal you for... Oh, you only got six. The haunt deactivates after a minute. That's true, so I guess the effect would wear off after a minute. Still something. Fair enough. Yeah, it, it, it only shuts off after a minute if there's nobody within a within, uh, hundred feet but I'm going to assume that you are moving far enough out of range that it will just shut down after a while. Yes. yes. Yeah. That is what we do. Yeah. So you have successfully gotten away from, escaped this uh, trap, this hazard, this weird ward that was placed on the box. We'll uh, we'll gather up the animals and we'll make our little campfire. Andreas will use uh, produce flame to cause a little, you know, nice little bonfire with some brush. Uh, to uh, gather around so Zankath can warm up there, too. All right, and she got a little bit of healing. Yeah, right, Jonesy will do some medicine checks here. Ooh, what, ooh that's a crit. That's a crit nice. success. Yeah, it is. With the 27. 2d8 plus. It's actually 4d8. 4d8. You're fine. I don't even need to do this. <laughs> 2d8 plus whatever, 18. Times two if we spend an hour. Times two, there you go. You're You're good. Okay. All right, so with some careful medical attention, Zankath is quickly recovering from her strange magical encounter. In the meantime, you've got this loot that you stole from the chest. I cast Reed Aura. Okay, uh, where do you want to start with? Oh, that staff sounds really cool. That I staff, thought you'd go yeah. for that one. Uh, so let's see what it says about this staff. Why would we want stuff that cold tentacles want? Uh the cold tentacles were a very dangerous protective ward around powerful magical items. Whoever set that there didn't want us to have it. Now we've got it. But it's important to note that they weren't tentacles. <laughs> they didn't have little suckers. That's true. I didn't notice that, Jonesy. I was <laughs> under the impression that they were tentacled. And that it was Desna. <laughs> Wait, Desna has tentacles? <laughs> no. That's why I was so confused. Oh, now I understand why he froze up. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I was shocked. So it has the magical trait, of course, and the necromancy trait. Ooh, let me roll on that. Yeah, why don't you give me, uh, you know, um, arcana, religion, occultism, whatever. One of, your, one of those four checks you can use for identifying. Done. Let's see, you got that. Andreas looks over the staff, this smooth white wood. It's got a gold cross on top that's just covered in rubies. Very Catholic. This thing is a staff of healing. Ooh, oh, what? Nice. That sounds like it's for me. It is pretty sweet. <laughs> I would say this is the first good magic item. I mean, I guess the ghost touch rune is pretty good. Andreas clutches the staff close to his chest. <laughs> yes. Why shouldn't I respect? <laughs> <laughs> And he passes the staff over to Jonesy. All right. So a staff of healing gives you an item bonus to the hit points you restore anytime you cast the heal spell using your spell slots or using charges from the staff. It also gives you charges to cast uh, heal and stabilize. So what? you can uh, ca- get some extra extra spells. Pass it on over. You've got now a plus one to your healing. When you when you heal someone, they'll they'll heal an extra one point. And you can use spell slots from this item to cast heal and stabilize. Wow, that's that actually really cool. good. Nice. nice. So uh, when you prepare your spells in the morning, you prepare your staff as well. Your staff has a number of charges equal to the highest level of spell you can cast. So two. we're Ooh. level three. We can cast level two spells. So that means you have two charges. One charge casts a spell of that level. So if you spend one charge you cast a first level heal later on eventually you'll be able to cast like a second level heal by spending two charges okay that's cool although it looks like because this is just a regular staff of healing and not a staff of healing greater it says it can just do a first heal i don't don't think you can do higher level healing with this staff if if you were to find someone who could you could pay the money to upgrade it you can do that later 
All right. Then there's also this, uh, there are these three religious symbols. Big surprise. They're for asthma, holy symbols. And then there is a bundle of some stick-like things tied up. It's pretty obvious upon closer inspection. You don't, you don't need to roll for those. Those are incense. Ah. Rare incense. They're worth about 40 gold pieces. I think we should keep those in case we ever want to do some sort of ritual to perhaps consecrate <laughs> a location. <laughs> and then there's this slim leather folio. I'll just take that. Okay. And uh, do I flip it open? How many spells are inside? You open up the folio. There is only one spell inside. And guess what it is? It's a heal. It's a consecrate ritual. Oh! Explained in detail. You now need to make the trip back to the uh, High Barrows. You've left the following nearby. Man, all of our complaining last session about not having consecrate ritual, and it's just right here. It's, it's right, right here. there. Yeah. Oh, you have a choice, actually. You could move back into that hex to the north, or you could move to the northwest and then head north. You want to go that way, the, one, the way that Sean has indicated, back the way you came? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think that's safe. Yeah. So you head into that hex. It takes... Is that hills or is it plains? Because it looks kind of like both. I think that one might be hills. Yeah, you know what? I think I may have moved you guys too fast last time. Yeah, I think I moved you guys too fast last time because that's well, supposed... Well, that's because it was downhill. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Because I think that those are hills and I moved you th- through them too quickly last time. I've done enough hikes to know going downhill is faster. <laughs> and we go downhill both ways. Obviously. Right. Obviously, Obviously. Yes. yes. Kids these days don't even know. <laughs> no concepts. Mike is done with that. <laughs> I've got to reorganize my ridiculous calendar here. All right, so here's what I've got. On the 14th, you were moving into the hills. On the 15th, you travel into the hills. 16th, you travel into the hex you're currently in, in the hills. 17th, you continued traveling. You found the cave with the chest in it, and all that stuff just happened. On the 18th, you're moving back. Now... Let me tell you, if you were to go straight northwest, those are plains. Oh. So that might be slightly faster, but then again, you'd be entering new territory. Risky business, entering new territory. So what do you want to do? Go back to the hills to the north, it'd be slightly slower, or go cut through the plains to the northwest? Plains. 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 Okay. Plains. Plains. (laughs) All right. Plains. So you spend a day moving into the plains... And on that day, the burning mammoths finally move into the forest, way to your northwest. <laughs> ah, suckers. <laughs> that was the 18th. And then the next day, you move into the hex where the following is, unless you want to go northwest. Nope. Nope. No. Okay, so you move into the hex where the following is. And when we're near the following, we find two casters who follow Saren Ray. They don't need to be casters. We find two people who worship Saren Ray. <laughs> now, remember, Saren Ray is Sister Cinder, so if any of you follow Sister Cinder, the patron deity of the Broken Tusks, then you count as yeah. followers. I count. Yeah. Gorgo definitely counts. I don't know if Zancath counts. Zancath does not. She's like my number two. <laughs> yeah, I'll let She's you cool. decide. She's great. Are, I'll let you decide. Are you... If she's your number two, would you call yourself a follower? Are you, you're not down with the cinder? <laughs> How have we been friends this entire time? What's the matter with you? So here's the thing. Desna and Saren Ray like, make out all the time. And I like Desna and you like <laughs> Saren Ray. So really, we all, we're all part of a big family. Wait, so you're saying we just all make out all the time? That's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> no, we're friends with people who make out together, and we like them, so... Therefore, we cool. should make out. I'm not sure I'm down with that. You guys are jumping at logical conclusions. <laughs> I'm just, just saying that, I also that, like that, Sarah that Ray. That is what the example she, that you brought she's up. She's good for my friend. They, they work well together. It's a positive, positive influence on each other. You should just, you know, take a tape recorder... And just record yourself saying things throughout the day. <laughs> just, just to see what you say. You might, you might be surprised. I feel like you wrote some really weird fan fiction about <laughs> stuff. No. I think the conclusion is that you like Saren, right? Yeah, I can worship Saren, right? It's good. On Saturdays. We're shipping gods? Let's do on it. Saturdays. <laughs> you move back into the hex where the following is, and then pass them back up to the 
high barrows hex in the hills. And the burning mammoths have moved another time during all that movement, although they're still quite a ways away from you because there are quite a few delay actions that you've imposed on them. And they also are going to get lost once along that path that they're taking. So uh, you move back up to the high barrows. You've got your ritual. So let me explain a little bit about how rituals work. First, they're spells. And anyone can cast them if they have the right skills. Right? So first, they're spells. Second, anyone can cast them. Third, it takes a long time to cast them. Specifically, it takes a primary caster and two secondary casters. And with a multi-day ritual like Consecrate, they must each spend eight hours a day working on the ritual with some resting while one continues casting. And in the case of the Consecrate ritual, the materials you need are within the chest or were within the chest. The rare incense... You've got to use all 40 gold pieces worth to make this work. Mm -hmm. The primary caster attempts a religion check, while the secondary casters attempt crafting and performance checks. The secondary casters must be worshippers of the same faith as the primary caster. So you've got to all follow Saren Ray if Jonesy's going to lead this with a religion check. If Jonesy is the primary caster, that would allow Corgo and Andreas, if you want to count Andreas, since the tribe follows Sister Cinder, also known as Saren Ray, the difficulty of the primary checks is based on twice the ritual's level. It's a level 2 ritual, so that means a DC of 19, if we're going to base it on DC four, uh, a level 4 difficulty. Uh, so that means DC 19, and then I'm supposed to add plus 5 to that to make it very hard. So that oh, means no. the religion check would be DC 24. Oh. oh man, this is like painting my cabinets all over again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the secondary checks will only be DC 19, the regular difficulty. The secondary checks might give a bonus or penalty depending on the level of success or failure, right? So if the assistance doesn't go well, they might make it harder for Jonesy. If it goes mm. really well, they could make it easier, but you would have to hit a 29 to get a critical success, and I don't think either of you can do that. There's also mention that the skills that are used need to be a particular level. For example, there might be a requirement that a ritual have a primary caster be an expert in a skill, but I don't see anything about that for the Consecrate spell. So I think we're good as far as that's concerned. So if you get back to the High Barrows, if we look up the ritual, primary check has to be religion. The secondary checks have to be crafting or performance. I can do crafting. Yeah, so Andreas can do crafting. Now the question is, and it doesn't say here, and I wasn't sure, does one have to be crafting and the other has to be a performance? Or could they both be crafting? It's a comma. Yeah, it says comma. It doesn't say crafting and performance, right? I assume it's one or the other. I, I don't know. Corgo's better at crafting, so let's do that. Let's be generous, because this is already really difficult. Yeah. And you've already used your hero points, so... Right? Everyone's used their hero points, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, you know, I'm not feeling so good, and i we got to record later. Oh, okay, yeah. we got to wait till the next time. Oh, man. It's too oh. soon for the cliffhanger. <laughs> I'll make a new one. We had to do all that tech support. Oh, so, okay. So, we are potentially giving bonuses. Possibly, if you get a critical success. Okay. But if you just get a regular success, then it doesn't do anything. It just doesn't hurt Jonesy's attempt. Oh, if you fail, I think it's a minus two. And oh, if you geez. critically fail, it's a larger penalty. So, And I have to get a 24? Yes. Oh, man. I think I already rolled like two or three really good rolls, so this is just over. Oh, and So what happens when we fail? We just, all the instances used up? That's right. And you don't succeed at the... Uh, oh, okay. So we would then have to find more incense. If you critically fail, then you could anger your deity. Ooh, oh, God. Whoa. This is too much pressure. I, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I, 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 oh, God. I mean, Saren Ray. I suppose this is a really long thing, so Jonesy can't bless. That's right. Okay. If there's some effect that would add a bonus, you can use it, but only if it lasts the entire duration of the casting. It's a long mm -hmm. time. All right, well, uh, let's get to work, Andreas. Um, okay, I can use I can use astrology. Um, it's not real, Andreas. Look, <laughs> <laughs> it actually is. <laughs> uh, I can use astrology. I'm just hunting to see if there's anything my uh, familiar can do. I just don't know if I can work for eight hours straight. Well, that's sounds like you. <laughs> 
familiar abilities. Uh, is there anything about rituals? Corgo's like setting up the ritual area. I guess that's what the crafting is for. Sure. Yeah. You know, setting down branches just right. Yeah, you've got to set them up relatively close to where these undead are, the ones you want to put to rest. Yeah, the area that it affects is a 40 foot radius around wherever you set up your altar or shrine or, or whatever it is that Jonesy sets up or you help Jonesy set up. Yeah, okay, so before we begin, Andreas will perform some astrological readings. Just have to make sure that this is the right day. We should actually do this. If the signs uh, portend a positive result, then we go for it. Uh, I roll a d8. It's a one. Today's not a good day, guys. We can wait till tomorrow. (laughs) I was feeling the same. The clouds don't look very good. (laughs) Just not right. Just not right. You're going to burn another day waiting? Yeah. Then Jonesy's just gone. (laughs) <laughs> you get the next morning and Josie is not at the camp. <laughs> there's, just, there's just a note that says, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't take the pressure. On the 21st, then, you choose not to proceed because the astrological signs are bad. They were bad. Uh, next day, Andreas again takes a look at the stars in the sky as the sunrise is coming up and things are looking peachy keen. I get a plus one on my crafting check. So I will perform that crafting check. All right. So here goes the first attempt to do a secondary caster. Oh, boy. Here we go. No pressure. Here we go. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) That's a 12. A 12. (laughs) A 12 is a failure, which means a minus two on the religion check. I told you it's not real. (laughs) (laughs) Gorgo, would you like to attempt? Would you like to attempt a crafting check? (laughs) No, now the pressure's on too much. (laughs) Jonesy's got really serious and stressing Corgo out. (laughs) Jonesy's like soaked. Hear voices from inside. Are you doing a ritual out there? (laughs) Not right now. It doesn't sound like it's going well. Going just fine. I wouldn't even know. You're not helping. If that sister says yeah one more time, <laughs> Corgo, you can do this. Okay, Corgo's doing the last little bit. He's just trying to like I don't know set a wreath on their door or something. <laughs> it rolls at eighteen. Well, <sighs> not as bad. This is really not that bad. It's not. You're just one away from what you needed to, s- to succeed. Oh, man. But astrology. Does the astrology help him, too? No. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> it helps no one. It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> so, unfortunately, uh, that's another minus two oh, to Jonesy's check. Is it even possible? So we're at a t- 29. Jonesy's just looking now? at both of you, shaking his head, just... Eyes starting back and forth. Get out. I, I need space. Okay. I thought I did a good job. I tried my best. You really did. It just, <laughs> it's just that the DC is very high. You're a third level party. All right, Corgo sulks and goes and plays with animals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go for it. And if this doesn't work out, it's just because Jonesy's being a jerk. Did everybody fail him? Oh. oh, 13. Minus four. Oh, minus four. <laughs> nine. <laughs> a nine. Oh, no. Oh, that is a critical failure. <laughs> Jonesy, there is a clap of thunder. Oh, no. Oh. And suddenly you're, uh, the, the, the sweet smell of the incense just turns acrid. And you realize that something is wrong. For at least one year, further attempts to consecrate the site will fail. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. I thought that was going to be more disastrous to us personally. This is okay. like, you're getting fired bad. <laughs> <laughs> and from inside you hear, how did it go? Are you Are done? You done? We're, We're still, still here. here. <laughs> 
You know, I could probably run into this place and steal whatever's on that uh, tomb, too, if we <laughs> wanted to go that route. Not sure we do. Jonesy will put his hand on the... Because the, the tomb has been sealed, right? Yeah, I stacked rocks in front of it. You, you stacked yeah. rocks in front of it, yeah. So Jonesy will put his hand on the rocks and just just lower his head, just like breathing heavy. And I, I'm sorry, I, I failed you. I... I want to say that I'll be back in a year, but I don't even I don't even know if I can do that. I've failed my my deity and my I failed everybody. I Are you so, talking to so us? Sorry. <laughs> We're way back in this game. We can't really <laughs> hear you. Yeah. Andreas comes up, lays a hand on Jonesy's shoulder. You know, Jonesy, you could read this as another way, is that Saren Ray didn't want you to consecrate this space. Perhaps it's just so cursed that we should just bust down the door and destroy those undead the old-fashioned way. I don't think so. I don't think I'm a very good cleric. That's not true, I but... Was, I wasn't a very good rogue. And I let all those demons through, and I could take care of my my people, and you had to come and save everyone. I just... I, I need my space. Rumpy comes up and notices you're upset and starts sort of prodding you. Mm-hmm. Well, Jonesy will kind of nudge her away a little bit, g- gently, but not in a, in a mean way, as he, like, sulks. Jo- Jonesy, I would be dead easily half a dozen times at this point if not for you. While this may have not been a success, you have certainly been a successful cleric. The same goes for me too, Jonesy. Wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for your skills. He, he sniffles, and does like a, a weak smile, and then and then pets Rumpy. I, I'll I'll feel better later. Uh, thank you. I just. Sometimes you just don't do very good, and it it kind of sucks. It's okay to feel your feelings, but we're here for you. Cargo shows up with, like, a bag of, like, mammoth chips, and is <laughs> chewing really loud, and the animals are nearby, and he goes, Hey, did we help those naked ladies or not? Cargo, <laughs> shut up! Cargo, give me those chips. <laughs> <laughs> Cargo does so, no problem. <laughs> Jonesy starts eating them. <laughs> one by one. <laughs> totally mind blank stare. We can hear you eating chips! <laughs> okay, I'm kind of getting behind Andreas on the go to just kill them just, thing. We could just <laughs> sanctify the area the old fashioned way, like I'm saying. If you're not going to sanctify the area, could you put the door back up? Hello? <laughs> yes, yes, we're. We're putting the door back up. They're thinking about killing you. <laughs> what? We're already cool. dead. <laughs> oh, wait, they're dead? Yeah. Yes. Oh, why are oh, they naked? They're, they're undead. That's why we had to do the ritual. Did you think oh. we just locked a couple of people in this tube? And I have left no them idea there? what we're doing. I, we went and got a box <laughs> and there was like angry things in them. I don't care. <laughs> Corgo is more like an animal companion. He's just <laughs> sort of, just sort of like, whatever we're doing, I'm up for it. <laughs> we move we move away from the, the barrow. Okay. At least far enough that they're not going to keep yelling at us through the door. Okay. I think we should put the door up, and then just before we leave, ask them if they want it open or closed. <laughs> <laughs> open or closed? Open or closed. <laughs> I mean, where do you guys think we should go from here? Should we kill these whites? Nah. Nah. I think we have to come back in a year and try again. Mike, make sure you note that on your calendar. It, it is yeah. the uh, 22nd <laughs> of Desinus or Serenrith? Serenrith, or yeah. Serenith? That's right. Oh, it's even her month. Oh. I feel uh. like there should have been some bonuses for that. Do they want to be undeaded? Jonesy, what would Sister Cinder have us do? I mean... They're not hurting anything, right? No, but uh, I don't think Sister Cinder is willing to communicate with me at the moment. You do know she doesn't care for undead. But, but yeah, she doesn't like undead, I suppose. But these oh. are nice undeads. 
Oh, okay. Why don't we just come back in a year if we're up for it? That's a good plan. We'll do a better job next time. We can make it like a holiday. Yeah. Great. The day I failed. Ah, the day you were redeemed. So you're going to come back another time. I'll assume that you return to the following. I'm not even going to use up a day to do that. You're back at the following. You're just southeast of the cairn of the, uh, the high barrows. Where do you want to go now? We did have that other marker on the map. Yeah, the, the scary scowling face. face to yeah. the northeast. Mm-hmm. Spooky face. So you've got some plains to the northeast that you can move through if you want. Yeah, let's do those plains. Yep. So you move to the plains to the northeast and you reconnoiter the hex. And I'm going to roll some secret checks. Do we do our delay? Oh, yeah. Uh, you need to do a delay action. That's true. For that hex you just left, do you want to do a delay action? Yes. Because yes, we get to automatically make it better. That's true. Yeah, it moves up one category. So what kind of delay action would you like to make? You, you can conceal tracks or you can plant false tracks. I do the athletics one because I have the highest bonus. Okay. Help. So that's conceal tracks. You're going to help, Corgo? Yeah. Ooh. Plus one. It All right. Doesn't matter. Plus one Take from it. Corgo. So that's a twenty-two with Corgo's bonus. Awesome, uh, and then moves up to a critical success. Sure does. So yeah. So what that means is they're going to waste two days at that hex oh, and nice. go the wrong direction when they get yeah. to that hex just southeast Ooh. of the High Barrows. And they'll probably end up trying to check that chest, and then they'll all get lasered by the tendrils. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you successfully. S- slow them down significantly. I don't know what you did to conceal your tracks there. It seems like it'd be difficult to conceal them there, but whatever it is you did, thanks to the help of that map, you did a really effective job. You're going to lead them astray. And that means that you're now in that next hex. And uh, where do you want to go now? North. Try to stick to the plains for speed. Okay. Sticking to the plains, going north. That was a question. Okay. It's a question, not a statement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. North. <laughs> we just don't know what, what's ahead of us. It's just nope. a, it's, uh, it's a dark map. Oh, forest oh, ahead of us. Unfortunate. Oh. Yeah, so you draw closer to the woods here. The trees are densely packed with thick undergrowth. You're not sure you've ever seen trees this tall. Oh. The forest probably hasn't been disturbed in a long time, which makes sense as it has been decades since any following used this route, as far as you know. The sunlight only seems to reach the forest floor in occasional patches. So do you want to go through the forest or try something else? Yeah, the following is following us again, right? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, it said northeast, so I think we just keep going northeast. Do we want to go into the first stand of trees? Well, the mammoths like fit through all the... I don't know. Will they fit through They here? will fit, yes. You can get the mammoths through the forest. All right, let's do it. And do our delay action before we leave? Sure, yeah. You want to do the same thing? Plant false tracks? Yeah, I got a 22. Ooh, nice. Another six. Oh, critical, a two. critical success. You got a 24. Doesn't boost Andreas up oh, any, en- enough to give him a critical success, but still, it's a success. Thanks for your help. And that means that I've got to add yet another little note here. You just got to start copying and pasting them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to do that. Let me do that, actually. It's a smarter choice than what I've been doing. Regular success means they waste two days. You can actually get another one. You get another activity because you went to another hex of planes, the ones that you're currently in. So I assume you want to do the same thing again. Try to conceal tracks. Spam it. 28. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Nice. What happened to these rolls? Uh-huh. Yeah. When I was trying to consecrate a ritual. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that just the way it works? Is that a critical or no? No, it was not a critical. It was DC 20. I want to help. Yeah, I help plus two. What? Plus two? Hey! Uh, that bumps it up to a critical success. Yeah. Nice. That's how we Saren do it. Ray must be helping us. Eh? Where the tracks go? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Where the tracks go? <laughs> So whatever you're doing, you have, you're have you really on a winning streak here. You have totally confused. Maybe you've got your following helping you somehow, right? Maybe you've got yeah, the following yeah, somehow. System. It's just me and Gogo, actually. It's just you and Gogo. <laughs> All right, so the two of you have somehow figured out a system 
that makes your tracks makes the tracks of the entire following totally bewildering. We've tied branches to the tails <laughs> of the <laughs> mammoths, <laughs> and so of the, it's just, just like they're just scraping behind it. And yeah, okay. the check is just wrestling with mammoths <laughs> to get them to <laughs> brush onto their tail. <laughs> okay, the twenty seventh is the day that you enter the forest. Do you want to go straight north or northeast? East. Northeast. northeast. Okay. Northeast. You enter the forest. But it's a wee forest. It is, in yeah, fact, a wee, forest. a wee forest. Yeah. The following is staying a slightly greater distance behind you than usual. Uh, the forest feels ancient and brooding. You don't have a choice, though. As you can see, now that you've moved into this hex... There are mountains on either sides of these forests. You've got to push through this forest. You don't have any other way to proceed. So I need to know what exploration activities you're each doing. Oh, we haven't done this in a long time. Quick, pull up the cheat sheet. And I should remind you that if two of you are searching and one of you is an expert in searching, or expert in perception, I suppose, then one of you could follow the expert. Uh, I'm an expert in perception. Ah, well, someone could follow you, and that would allow them to add their level and your proficiency bonus to their check. Okay. It, rather than using our own bonus. Rather than using their own bonus, right. Cool, cool, cool. I like that idea. I feel like, I feel like I'm detecting magic. Okay. This is a creepy forest. Yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll stumble across like a magical meteor hammer mm-hmm. or like Just, a headband of vast intellect or a spell book. They do grow so. on trees. So <laughs> what's Zancath doing then? I'm percepting. Uh, okay. So you are. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I can still percept, right? Yep, you, you can perceive. Yeah. So you're looking for hidden dangers. Yes. Is anyone scouting doing the plus one to initiative thing? I'll do that. Jonesy's got a plus nine survival. Oh. So I think he's going to be looking for animal tracks. And... So which exploration activity is that? Track. Ah. Uh, Zancath, go ahead and roll that perception check if you're searching. 26. Excellent. Bravo. Nice. And Very nice. Roll that survival check, Jonesy. 10. Jonesy still hasn't recovered. From the concentrate spell. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a natural one. All right. So poor Jonesy uh, is just a little down and maybe not doing as, as good a job following tracks as he could. And Zancath is pretty alert. And Zancath, you do, in fact, see uh, signs of recent movement here in the forest. You can see some signs of some maybe some broken branches. Maybe something moved through here really quickly. You're not... Sure, but it looks like maybe something small ran through the area recently. You can all hear birds doing their usual chirping, and occasionally something moves in the foliage, a squirrel or a rabbit maybe. You have to cut your way through some of the undergrowth, so you're not as quiet as you might like. And it therefore comes as a bit of a shock when a tiny voice issues from what you thought was a pile of twigs in the dense underbrush. Now, Zancath, being extremely alert, saw them moving and sort of jumps back. But this little voice says, Excuse me, but perhaps you could help us? And we'll find out who that is next time. Who is it? They have a tiny voice. They're obviously a betrayer. (laughs) Are you sure it's not Desna? No. (laughs) Got him. Wow. Brutal. (laughs) (laughs) Probably astrology. That's what it is. That makes sense. Yeah, astrology. No, I am a astrology. <laughs> Can you help me? No one believes I am real. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> looking at oh, me, you say, "No, I don't see anything." <laughs> Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, by following us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at the House of Bob, or by chatting with us on Discord. And most of all. By supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash the house of Bob. This show is possible due to all our patrons who get special zines, one shots, commentary, and currently patrons at the $10 level get a mega dungeon level based on the tarot every month. Art for this episode is by Sean Makes. Audio production and music are by me, Mike Hammock. Thanks again for listening and roll on. I'm having to retrain myself during Spire to actually curse. It's weird.
I don't have to. That, you know, curs- <laughs> cursing is optional. I know, but I don't mind cursing. I've just been on podcasts ever forever that I'm not allowed to. <laughs> Hell damn fart. Hell damn fart. Those aren't swears. Can't trick us. Bart Simpson thinks they are. Well, he's a 10-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> 10-year-olds are the expert on swears. My 14-year-old nibbling knows quite a number of, well, nearly 14, quite a number of cur- curse words. Oh, De- dedicated to my, his craft. My little nephew is starting to curse. He's too cute. <laughs> uh, my 10-year-old nephew, however, gets offended anytime he hears any curse word. Oh. What a prude. Right? <laughs> Don't know what family that kid came from. I do. It just doesn't have an advanced option. I'll find. Oh, I'll really? find it. His wife. His wife locked the admin settings on him. <laughs> <laughs> she really does hate these podcasts. By the way, oh, so no. this, would, this would not surprise me at all. <laughs> she hates your podcasts. This would be a very specific like prank for her to pull, though. Like I feel like that. That's maybe not up her alley. She would just tell me to not do it. <laughs> Rather than like, oh, I'm going to turn off the advanced settings on your microphone and take that, you little, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Josh. I've got a new podcast idea. <laughs> Josh swears. <laughs> it's called The Secrets of the IT Phone Call. <laughs> and it would be just this. Mike walks people through various <laughs> IT problems. We had I a- cannot tell you how many times <laughs> I've had to take control of Chris's computer to help him find how to do something on it when we were... I would like to watch you try to help my dad out. <laughs> <laughs> that could be... His various- this is a YouTube channel. This is a YouTube channel. It's just Guy Provides. <laughs> <laughs> Tech support to seniors. Oh, what a oh, nightmare. Man. Now, wait a second here. How do I roll for initiative if we're not on a map? Yeah. Can we... Um, you can click on the char- the actors tab. Okay. And then... Nope. That's for Go us. Go to the but... encounters tab. Nope. <laughs> it's it's not actors tab? I mean... Put us. I need a Put way... us on a blank... Just put us on a blank map. We're on the last map that we were on. Okay. Uh, let's go to... Let's see here. Give me a moment. Let's go back to the high barrow. Hi, Barrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's on a roll. <laughs> uh, once I start, I can't stop. You've gotten goofy. Did you just shudder at Corgo's 28, Sean? Yeah, because I thought I rolled so good, and then he got a crit. Oh. Just can't be happy for others. I can't be happy for others. I'm too silly today. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be my one good roll tonight, so don't worry about it. Let me also point out one other frustrating thing here just because I'm taking pot shots. The adventure says that players who... F- um, do- oh, let me back up a bit. Do you guys remember at a- when Aowa died and uh, they had sort of a funeral? Uh, do you- do any of you remember doing performance checks there? Nope. No, no. because there's nothing in the adventure that says uh, people could do performance checks to talk about Aowa at his funeral. There's nothing about that in the adventure, right? However, here, the adventure says... That players who failed performance checks at Awa's funeral get a plus two bonus to, on their performance check here. Mm. Oh, so I'm pretty sure I tried. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like definitely you had just succeeded. edited that out. Yeah. No. Nope. Failed. I definitely failed. There was failed. nothing in the adventure <laughs> about uh, performances at the funeral. It's just something I think that they forgot to uh, to put in earlier. Like maybe the person who was writing this part said, "I've got an idea." They should do performances at the funeral and then forgot to go back and actually put that in at the funeral. Right. But in any case, doesn't help you now. Well, it might. I mean, you are the, the GM. You could just give us a plus two. <laughs> I mean, that could. only seems fair because... We're not even uh, trained. We can't even do it. Yeah, you're not even trained to performance, though. So a plus two, you still couldn't do it, even if you had a plus two. Mm. Extra spells. Look yep. at me. I'm Jesus. <laughs> 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 Modest to has it on over. I just felt the entire state of Utah get angry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys feel that? It was pretty intense. <laughs> We've been there. Really, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Look. Look at me. I'm somebody very important. <laughs> I thought you were about to say Muhammad, and I would have just left. <laughs> just, just, just make oh, everybody mad. <laughs> Insert powerful religious <laughs> figure. There you go. <laughs> What was our non-denominational uh, yeah, yeah. hero here? Yeah. Well, that's a good episode title. We'll come back another time. Yeah. 
There were there were a lot of good ones. I heard a lot of good ones. Yeah, there was good ones. I liked make the windows make, windows make again. Windows windows again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. 